ever get the feeling that luxury is a little, well, overused these days? Like mm -hmm. it's always about the price tag, right? But what if it was more about, you know, an experience? Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're digging into today. Right. This thing called Shopping Palooza. I've heard of this. Yeah, it's run by this woman, Sahar Ali Shahi. Okay. The Persian queen of Beverly Hills, they call her. At least that's what Lavish Life magazine says. And they did this whole profile on shopping palooza. It's fascinating. Yeah, and it's interesting, right? Because the whole luxury market is changing. I mean, yeah. it used to be all about, like, you know, which brand names you could flash around. Now it's about experiences, making it feel exclusive. Mm. Even this cool trend of supporting local talent, yep. which this shopping palooza seems to get. So, based on what Lavish Life was saying, paint me a picture here. They were talking music, art installations. Even gourmet food. Mm -hmm. This isn't just some fancy pop-up shop. Right. I think they even called it like a cultural rendezvous, which I thought was interesting to say the least. You know, in a city like L.A., as diverse as it is, even with everyone online shopping these days, yeah, people still want that connection, right? That mm -hmm. shared in-person experience you just can't get from hitting add to cart. Yeah, totally. It's like sometimes you just want to be around people, soak up the energy, you know? Exactly. But speaking of unique, one thing you can't just download is apparently the passion Sahar and her husband pour into this thing. Lavish Life was saying they're super hands-on, so it's not just like, here's a ballroom, make it chic, right? No, not at all. They're involved in every detail. Like, they handpick the vendors, set the mood, the whole nine yards. Like that Steve Jobs quote, mm -hmm. how they don't just make a product, they craft the entire experience. I'm getting the same vibes here. And it sounds like it's paying off too. Lavish Life mentioned some pretty big business deals going down at these things. So besides the whole luxurious setting, what else draws vendors in? They were talking networking and even landmark deals. What does that even mean in this context? Yeah, it's a good question. But basically it seems like Shopping Palooza is about more than just, you know, selling a product. It's about building a network, an ecosystem even. You've got these vendors connecting directly with celebrities, with influencers, working out collaborations and striking deals. That kind of networking is invaluable, especially for up and coming brands trying to, you know, break through the noise. So it's less about immediate sales and more about playing the long game. Yeah, exactly. I can see why they'd be into that. For sure. But it makes you wonder, right? Can this whole model even last? I mean, can you really keep that exclusive feel when everyone and their mother wants in on the action? That's the million dollar question, right? Yeah. It's the tightrope that every curated experience has to walk. The more you grow, the more you risk alienating the very people that were initially drawn to your, you know, your unique flavor. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how Shopping Palooza handles it as they, you know, inevitably grow. Well, for anyone listening who happens to be in L.A. and wants to see for themselves and maybe do some shopping, who knows? You're in luck. There's a shopping palooza coming up tied to, get this, the Persian New Year, now Ruse. Oh, wow. I know, right? Talk Ooh. about a cultural experience. Yeah, right. And it goes back to what we were talking about with, you know, connection, this curated luxury, this yeah. whole cultural rendezvous. Does it actually lead to real connection or is it more like you know, a, a very well-crafted illusion. Ooh. And could this kind of thing even work in another city, or is it tailor-made for a place like L.A.? Good question. Yeah. I'll leave those with you to think about. I like it.